let me begin by reaffirming the principles that guide Singapore's position on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We have consistently advocated for a negotiated two-state solution that is consistent with the relevant UN Security Council resolutions because we believe this is a way for Israelis and Palestinians to live side by side in peace and security. In fact, this is the only viable path for achieving a comprehensive, a just and a durable solution to this conflict. We have also consistently supported the right of the Palestinian people to a homeland. In 1988, the Palestinian Liberation Organization issued a proclamation on the state of Palestine, which affirmed the UN's partition of the mandate of Palestine into an Arab and a Jewish state, as well as the PLO's decision to renounce violence against Israel. We welcome this proclamation back in 1988 because the PLO had therefore explicitly rejected terrorism and recognized the right of the State of Israel to exist. We saw these moves as progress towards a durable solution. On the 18th of April 2024, a UN Security Council resolution that recommended that Palestine be admitted for membership to the UN was vetoed. On the 10th of May 2024, the General Assembly took up a resolution expressing support for Palestine's membership in the United Nations and recommended that the Security Council reconsider this matter favor favorably. Singapore voted in favour of this resolution after very careful consideration. And this reflected our hope to encourage both Israel and Palestine to resume direct negotiations towards a two-state solution at a time when, in fact, the prospects for such negotiations were increasingly bleak. We therefore decided to join the majority of the international community in supporting this resolution, which is also in line with our long-standing support for the principles of international law and for the implementation of all relevant UN Security Council resolutions. Our vote at the United Nations General Assembly means that Singapore is prepared in principle to recognize the state of Palestine. We will make this move at an appropriate time. Our key consideration is that such a move on our part should help progress towards peace and a negotiated two-state solution. In particular, there will need to be an effective Palestinian government that accepts Israel's right to exist and categorically rejects terrorism. Both sides have legitimate rights, and both peoples have a right to live in peace and dignity within secure borders. We urge both sides to seize the moment to take steps towards a long-lasting peace and to put an end to the suffering that has gone on for far too long. Ultimately, Israelis and Palestinians will need to exercise leadership and will have to work together to forge a better future for their peoples. As Singapore is a friend to both, Singapore will continue to offer our encouragement and our tangible support to both Palestinians and Israelis. So Singapore will continue our, our engagement with the Palestinian Authority. We will continue to implement our $10 million enhanced technical assistance package 
to help the Palestinian Authority build capacity and to prepare for ultimate statehood. To date, we have trained more than 750 Palestinian officials in a variety of areas, including diplomacy, water management, economic management, urban planning. These are important, vital areas that any government will need to have the necessary expertise in. During my most recent visit to Ramallah in March this year, Prime Minister of Palestine, Mohammed Mustafa, expressed his appreciation for our long-standing technical assistance and, in fact, he sought further capacity-building support, especially in civil service training and in digitalization. I welcomed his interests in these areas. And I said that Singapore will do our best to respond. As a follow-up, there will be a cause on transforming public service with the power of artificial intelligence, which we will conduct for Palestinian Authority officials later this month. We will also provide a fully funded scholarships for Palestinian officials to pursue postgraduate studies in our local universities. And three Palestinian officials have already been awarded scholarships this year, I think in accountancy, in international political economy, and in Infocom's security. We hope that these tra training opportunities will help the Palestinian Authority officials better serve the Palestinian people, as well as equip them with the necessary skills when it comes to the eventual reconstruction of Gaza. On Mr. Faisal Manap's specific question on training Palestinian officials to aid in the reconstruction of Gaza, let me just state that Singapore will assess how best we can help bilaterally and, in fact, as part of a multilateral effort. I remain in close and constant contact with all my counterparts in the Middle East on this issue. Singapore participated in a conference co-hosted by King Abdullah II of Jordan, Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, and the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on the 11th of June this year to discuss the humanitarian response to Gaza. We stand ready to contribute, taking into account Gaza's needs and in account of our own resources and expertise. But clearly, all this can only take effect when the fighting ceases. For now, the focus has to be on securing an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza and the release of all hostages immediately. 